Synthetic biology is a field of study in which scientists combine engineering principles with biology in order to reprogram organisms to carry out novel functions. These synthetic functions range from degrading microplastics in soil, bioremediating petroleum out of oceans after an oil spill, creating more nutrient-dense crops, and even delivering personalized therapeutics into the human gut microbiome. An integral biological concept for understanding how synthetic biology works is the central dogma, the flow of genetic information in living organisms. Information is encoded in DNA and then transferred into RNA via a process called transcription. Then, this information in RNA is used to make proteins via a process called translation. These proteins are the workhorses of the cell, carrying out important, necessary functions. The organism that this DNA circuit is transformed into is called a chassis. When researchers insert novel DNA into a chassis, it is able to use that synthetic DNA as a template to make RNA, and then use that RNA to synthesize proteins that allow it to perform these revolutionary and beneficial functions. This is similar to how in mechanical engineering, the chassis is the outer structure and framework of the machine. In synthetic biology, chassis are often bacterial species, like E. coli. There are so many other different types of bacteria that can be genetically engineered, such as P. putida, B. subtilis, and M. smegmatis. And not all chassis are bacterial. Researchers have genetically engineered organisms, including yeast, fungi, and even plants. Why does choosing a chassis matter? Well, each chassis has widely different genetic information and machinery, phenotypes, and preferential environmental conditions. Let's focus on these differential environmental preferences. Each organism has optimal growth and survival conditions. Some bacteria will thrive in extremely high temperatures, while others will almost immediately die. Some bacteria prefer acidic conditions, while others prefer basic conditions. Some are more adaptable to resource deprivation, some are more resilient to phage infection, some prefer moist areas, and some prefer deserts. Since synthetic proteins will not be produced from the DNA circuit without a living host, choosing a chassis that can survive in the environment it is intended for is critical to a fieldable synthetic biology project. Despite the immense benefit of creating fieldable synthetic biology systems, the current state of chassis selection is not well explored. Currently, E. coli is the most commonly used bacterial chassis since it is culturable, well characterized, and easy to work with in the lab. Despite its well established history in microbiology, E. coli doesn't appear to be a particularly fieldable species as it is not prevalently found in natural environments such as soil and water. Some papers have attempted to urge synthetic biologists to move to work with more fieldable chassis, but there is still a massive lack of data characterizing which environments these suggested fieldable chassis will be most adapted for. There is an urgent need for a more in-depth understanding of chassis. Let's talk for a moment about why this is so difficult. For starters, it is difficult to study environmental bacteria to characterize them as new, not yet explored chassis since the majority of environmental bacteria are non-culturable in the lab and thus are extremely difficult to experiment on and seemingly impossible to engineer. As for bacteria that are culturable and have been studied in laboratory settings, it is still difficult to predict how these organisms will survive in nature since bacteria behave vastly differently in the lab than in the environment. Bacteria have two main life states, exponential growth and growth arrest. In the lab, Bacteria often exist in exponential growth, where they express their circuit with ease. However, under the stressors of a natural environment, such as metabolite shortage, bacteria often switch into growth arrest in order to promote their own survival, shutting down the production of most non-essential proteins. This means that even if a chassis performs optimally in the lab, it may not express its circuit at all in the environment. There is a huge lack of data characterizing the issue of predicting how an engineered organism will behave outside of the lab. Finally, putting aside these biological issues, there is simply no standard way for researchers to select an ideal chassis for a given environment. Currently, scientists have to conduct extensive literature and database searches to determine the relationship between different environmental parameters and different species of organisms 
or they have to physically perform experiments, such as 16S PCR, at the exact location they plan on implementing their system in order to determine what bacteria naturally exist there. So where do we go from here? The future of chassis selection involves computational and mathematical predictive models. Predictive models based on biological data, such as DNA and RNA sequencing, will allow researchers to estimate the relative abundances of bacteria in a given environmental sample, assisting in the chassis selection process. Metabolic models, such as GEMS, will allow researchers to then model the survival of their chassis in that environment. The expansion of synthetic biology is dependent on computer science and data science. Tools such as simulations and artificial intelligence hold the key to streamlining major field ability roadblocks, such as chassis selection, and allowing SynBio to more easily change the world.